Hey everyone, welcome back to another development log for Soaring Gliders. So I'm already anticipating that this week is going to be as hectic or more hectic than the previous ones, so I'm going to make sure not to scope in too much work this week. Let's take a look at the Trello board. So I think this week I'm going to tackle the speedometer uh, feature because the speedometer will give us um, immediate visibility as to whether or not the plane should actually fly or not or you know take off because that will immediately tell us um, how to tweak the plane mechanics. So this will be very useful and I know that planes don't really have speedometers they have things like the altimeter which tells you the altitude of the plane they also have the ground speed indicator um, which tells you how um, fast the plane is relative to the ground and they also have the airspeed indicator which tells you how fast the airplane is relative to the speed of the air around it um, but for now i think i'm going to implement a normal um, speedometer that cars have because um, there's plenty of tutorials online uh, that show you how to do that and I'm not the best at Unity 3D so I need to follow one of those tutorials to better understand how to um, program essentially. So I'm going to do that and see where that takes me. I'm partway through CodeMonkey's tutorial on how to build a car speedometer and I'm pretty pleased with the results. So you can see here a circle with a needle in it which is a speedometer's needle and when I change the user speed you can see the needle rotating around that center point. So all I need to do now is finish the tutorial which is about showing the labels with the numbers on it. Okay, so I'm back after following the tutorial and I'm pretty happy with the results. So when I click play, you can see the labels auto generating around the speedometer, which looks fantastic. And as I move the uh, user speed float value, you can see the red needle moving around the speedometer and topping out at 200 and bottoming out at zero. So it looks really good. And um, I think I'm going to clock off now. Hey there, welcome back. It's Thursday 28th of May around 9pm and I finished hooking up the speedometer with the movements of the plane. I'm pretty happy with the results and it was only a one line change, but let me show you the code and how it works. As the plane moves, the speed uh, increases. Um, and a speedometer needle rotates around the center point, which is pretty cool. So the plane is now increasing the speed, and you can see that being reflected in the speedometer. And you can see it wobbles a bit because it's going over these humps, so um, the speed is changing a bit, um, which is uh, really cool. Uh, I wonder if I can slow this plane down so you can see it decreasing. Right, so you can see it's slowing down. Awesome. So we know that works. Right, let's take a look at the code. So as you can see, this is the boilerplate speedometer code from CodeMonkey's tutorial. So thanks CodeMonkey. Uh, it's, pre it's pretty uh, simple actually. And the only line I changed from his code was um, this one here. Uh, so instead of uh, using a random uh, velocity, we use the target rigid body's magnitude um, of the velocity, i.e. the speed, and we multiply that by 5. 5 is what you could imagine as the scale, so it basically aligns this um, rigid body speed with uh, in-game coordinates to real-world coordinates, so the speed number that you get is more realistic. I still need to uh, twiddle with this uh, value because it's still not quite right but I'll do some calculations later to get it uh, right. So as you can see in the awake function which is um, what we do before the game begins we find a needle transform and we also uh, create the speed labels and what that does is it populates the labels around the speedometer with the numbers that we need so essentially this is the label that we instantiate around the uh, speedometer and then we start from zero and we basically 
populate it with values from 0 to 200 in user specified increments. In this particular case, our user specified, um, so the number of um, labels we'll have is 10. So each increment will be 20. So 0, 20, 40, 60, and so on, as you can see. Um, so that, that's pretty cool because that allows for greater flexibility if we wanted to change it in the future. Um, so yeah, one cool thing here is we set the needle transform as the last sibling. So as you can see, the needle is currently behind the label transform, but because it's done in code, um, we guarantee that the needle is always above the, um, the labels, which is really, really cool. Um, I like that and I'll make sure I do that in the future. Um, and also, um, the important function here is get speed rotation, which takes in a uh, speed parameter um, or argument. And what that does is it um, converts the speed into an angle, an angle being, um, so for example, if the speed is 40, it calculates how much the angle should be that the needle should be rotated to show that speed. So for example, here the uh, speed, if the speed was 40, it would define this as an angle, which would basically tell you how, um, how much the needle should be rotated to show us the angle that we need, to show us the speed that we need. So yeah, that's basically it. I'm pretty happy with this. And the next step is uh, probably to work on the altimeter in a couple days. Thanks for watching this far. I know this devlog wasn't too much and, it didn't, and I didn't cover too much in this week, but um, I was super busy and I'm definitely gonna get more done next week. Nonetheless, I hope you found the content interesting. And if you do like it, be sure to hit that like button and make sure you subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. Anyways, please do leave a comment below if you've got any suggestions and I'll see you in the next one.